Have you ever wondered what secrets lie hidden in the vast expanse of the Sonoran Desert in Southwest Arizona? Come along on an incredible journey off the beaten path as we explore abandoned gold mines, stumble upon forgotten cabins, and wander through the eerie silence of a sprawling ghost town. And if we're lucky, we'll encounter the most elusive and majestic creature that roams these lands. Join me for an unforgettable adventure into the wild unknown. Wow, this place is beautiful. I'm in Southwest Arizona in the Sonora Desert and this is a place I have never explored before and I am super excited to go see a lot more of this incredible beauty. There's a lot of history out here, a lot of mining history, and there's a very well-known animal that has been elusive to me out in the desert and I'm hoping, I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled, that we will see at least one, maybe more than one. But I've been on the road all day long and uh, we're gonna head down the trail for a little while and see if we can find a good campsite and then, uh, and then we'll explore from there. All right, let's go. Welcome to the heart of the Kofa Wildlife Refuge, a pristine expanse of this Sonoran Desert here in Arizona. This rugged landscape stretches over 665,000 acres, boasting jagged peaks and vast open valleys. It was named after the legendary King of Arizona mine. Kofa is a sanctuary for an incredible array of wildlife and countless species of plants and animals that adapt to thrive in this harsh yet beautiful environment. Over the next couple days, I'm in search of some historic ruins that lay deep into this backcountry, and I will be on the lookout for a particular animal that flourishes out here. First, got to put down some miles and keep an eye out for the perfect camp spot for the night. Wow, this area is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I don't have a big agenda. I uploaded several tracks in this region and sat down on the computer and marked some potential points of interest and some campsites. So we've got plenty of places to explore and check out. But honestly, if something comes up and it looks like, hey, let's take a right or let's take a left, uh, that's the plan. I just want to go explore this place because, well, I've never been out here before and I'm glad I came. So far, the terrain has been very mild wide open, a few little sandy sections, a couple washes that'll slow you down, but otherwise very nice and easy. But we just turned off and are on a little two track. It's gonna get a little tighter. It's supposed to be a moderate trail and uh, it's heading in the direction I wanna go. It looks beautiful up there in the mountains and that's what we're hoping for is a nice camp spot with a great view. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that there's an animal out here. Yeah, definitely uh, a little more a little more technical here. Uh, not a big deal, but just uh, it's not smooth road anymore. Uh, there's an animal out here that has been elusive to me over the years. And I have never seen a longhorn sheep in the wild. They are in Anzabrego. They are everywhere in the desert. Yeah, I'm just going slow here. There's a nice little dip right there. Um, I've never seen one ever, ever, ever. And so I brought my binoculars and every once in a while I'm stopping and I'm scoping because I'm hoping that this is the spot to see him because this is a wildlife refuge and specifically to protect the sheep. So hopefully, hopefully before this trip is over, I'll get lucky and finally get to see one. hit the dirt I was a little worried if I we'd have time to 
explore or not. And uh, cruising down that first section of trail was nice and easy. I was like, oh, we're, we're doing great. And now that I've kind of hit this windy two track, uh, things have slowed down and, and I've stopped a couple times because I really want to see a sheep. I still have not seen one yet. There are lots of campsites out here, more than I can count. I'm not even marking them. Uh, there's just a bunch of them out here off the side of the trail. Some of them have fire rings, they're all flat. They have views off in the distance, but I'd like something a little more tucked in to the mountains just in case it decides to get windy. It shouldn't tonight. And so I have a couple spots marked, but I've only got about an hour and a half of daylight left, so I need to pick up the pace a little bit. Quit looking for a big horn sheep. Bit of a bummer. I had seen this trail off the main trail that goes up into the mountains and marked a camp spot there, but it looks like the Park Service has, uh, has corned it off, so we're not going there. So we'll keep going up a little further and see if we can find something up here. Here's the situational report. Every single trail that leads up into the mountains on the map has either been reclaimed by nature or it was blocked off by the Park Service. So there's no hope in getting up in those mountains. Now, I mentioned there are tons and tons of flat campsites back here that are kind of pretty open. They're nice, they're beautiful. I mean, it's got gorgeous scenery out here, but there's no protection from the wind. The other option, is I keep on going, but now we're gonna get into this pass and canyon, and generally my experience is when you are in a canyon, uh, there's usually not any uh, campsites. So I think we will venture off there tomorrow. It's already starting to get a little late and I could eat. So I think what I'm gonna do is backtrack just a little bit. There were some really nice flat spots back there. Still have some gorgeous views. Can see just the top of the Castle Dome Rock from here, which is cool. We're gonna get hopefully really close to that tomorrow. All right, let's go find camp. So far, nothing. Now I've got the binoculars for this. These are a great set of Bushnell's 16 by 32. So I can get out and see pretty far with these guys. And I still yet have not seen any movement at all. No wildlife whatsoever, not even like deer mule or anything. So I'll keep looking, fingers crossed. In fact, I was texting Regina on the Zolio and I let her know, hey, this is my camp spot for the night. I sent her my location. And she texts and she says, have you seen any sheep yet? Because she knows that I really was hoping this would be the trip. And I said, no, not yet. And she said she was just talking to some folks that said, oh, they've seen them in Kofa many times. I'm like, great. I just want to see one. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start dinner here in a minute. Um, but I, I got to say, it's beautiful out here. So quiet. The air is completely calm. And the views all the way around are amazing and I think getting ready for a beautiful sunset. Alright, I have been spotting 
for the last half hour and still no luck, but I've been scanning all around, hoping, hoping to see something. Now the sun just set behind the mountain here, so I'm probably gonna lose my light pretty quick, but something interesting uh, that I was noticing is just above this mountain peak over here, you probably can't see it, but there's a blimp up there. It's a bright white blimp and it looks like it has some small black objects, maybe some cameras or something underneath it. I wonder if that's something to maybe monitor the wildlife. I don't know. I'm curious. There is an army base not too far from here, but I think that is actually inside the wildlife refuge. So if you happen to know why they would fly a blimp here, a white one, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to know some more specifics on it. I will definitely look that up when I get connectivity. Okay. Uh, I'm going to lose light here, so I'm going to go ahead and get this started with dinner. I know what you're thinking. That's two big burgers, Brad. You gonna be able to eat those? Probably, because it smells really good. And I've been running up and down the trail a lot today, and uh, I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's perfect. Perfect. I can't believe the sunset that we just witnessed. That was absolutely breathtaking. I knew it was gonna be beautiful tonight with the clouds up there and the mountains, but that was, that was just straight up magical, guys. I have not seen a sunset like that in a long, long time. Well guys, I failed. There was no way I was gonna eat both of those burgers. I ate about one and a third and then I just couldn't do it anymore, but it was so good. You know, it's funny because in San Diego, the, every year there's this ranking of the best cheeseburger joints and I've eaten at a lot of them. None of them make a burger that is that good. That brioche bun, the egg on there, the fresh tomato, oh, and the chipotle mayo. That's a great burger, guys. Okay, uh, there's, there's still red in the sky. I cannot believe believe that sunset uh, it's gorgeous but it is early the sun's going down very early because it's winter so I've got the I got the propane fire pit going and uh, it's supposed to be chilly tonight so I will turn the heater on inside the tent and uh, probably just kind of hunker down in there with a uh, with a good book a little bit later but uh, right now I'm just gonna enjoy the calmness of this beautiful desert I can't remember the last time I've seen a desert night like this
is delicious guys the salsa a little bit of burnt cheese on the edge it's a perfect omelet it is chilly this morning but it has been gorgeous out here however still the elusive bighorn sheep I have not seen any this morning you would think if they were out here they would be in these mountains but hopefully as uh, as we go south a little bit maybe we'll run into them I'm not sure I'm hoping I'm hoping guys, but uh, right now I'm going to enjoy this omelet and some more coffee. All right guys, camp is all packed up and we are Oscar Mike and I am excited to see what the day has in store for us. First thing we're gonna do is head down this canyon, which I'm really looking forward to. It's supposed to be very beautiful. And then uh, we've got a lot to explore, a lot of ground to cover, and hopefully see some really cool stuff today. This morning, I'm venturing down McPherson Pass that stretches 19 miles through the heart of the Castle Dome Mountains. This trail gently winds through the canyons with occasional bursts of small rocky challenges and deep sandy washes that is easily navigated by a sturdy 4x4 with high clearance in about three hours. I'm traveling from the north and there is an incredible point of interest just on the south side. I cannot wait to show you. I can't remember the last time I was this attentive to my surroundings. I am just keeping my eyes peeled for any movement in the hills. I know that bighorn sheep are camouflaged pretty well, so they might be tough to see. I, I hope my have gone right past them. I don't even know. It is, however, extremely rugged and beautiful. Just the landscape out here is gorgeous. Castle Dome Rock off in the distance. This place is awesome. I love it out here, uh, but I do. I do got to start picking up the pace a little bit. I just stopped for a minute just to have a look around and lo and behold, right here in front of me, there's some hoof prints. Now, I don't know that they're from a bighorn sheep, but my guess is they probably are. They gotta be getting close, guys. Well, I was wrong about what I said last night about no campsites down this canyon, I have passed some incredible spots. I wish, I mean, we had a great spot last night, but I wish I would have driven just a few more miles into here, this, this spot right here, guys. That, that's a keeper, I'm marking that one.
y'all doing? Good, yourself? Doing great, man. It's a beautiful day out here. Yeah, it is. Take it easy. You too. Have a good time. Noise? Some rocks? Smash some rocks together. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe, but maybe I'll give you There was a group that used to hang out down there by Big Eye Mine. Okay. But you got to go into Big Eye Mine, and then you, it's only one way in and one way out. Yeah, I actually have that on the on the. If I have time, I'm going to try to go up there today. There's so. always big one sheep there. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe I'll definitely will go there today. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, man. Good to see you on the trail. Thank you. Good to see you. And keep up the good videos. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. So I just had a big group of uh, jeeps come by talking to him for just a moment and I asked one of them if they had seen any bighorn sheep and he said no we haven't seen any today he's like but one trick is if you don't see any go sit up on a hill somewhere smash two big rocks together and they think that that's two males fighting and they will come running so I don't know if I'm gonna do that today but maybe I'll give it a try my journey through McPherson Pass was incredible today, and while I didn't spot any of these mythical creatures I keep hearing so much about at the end of the trail, I was greeted by the remnants of a bygone era. The Castle Dome Mine Ghost Town Museum stands as a testament to the vibrant history of the mining in Arizona. This ghost town is more than a collection of artifacts. It's a portal to the past, tucked away in the rugged landscape of the Castle Dome Mountains. Well, no bighorn sheep, but after being on the trail for several hours, we've arrived here to the Castle Dome City ghost town. It's an old mining town that they have restored. It's a museum. And this place is something I read about and I've been super excited to come check out. And since I was in this area, we had to stop by and come look at it. So what I'm gonna do is give you a tour around here. This place is super cool. Here, among the 50 plus buildings, you can stroll through the dusty streets as if walking alongside the miners and settlers that once called this place home. Each structure tells a story, from the mercantile, where its shelves are lined with goods of the era, to the saloon, where one can almost hear the echoes of laughter and lively piano tunes, the blacksmith shop with its tools still in place, offering a glimpse into the daily toils that fueled this community. The museum not only preserves the physical structures, but also the spirit of those that work tirelessly in search of precious ore. It's here that you can truly grasp the hardships of hopes of the 19th century miners as you peek into their homes, gaze at the church bell, and imagine what it must have sounded like ringing across the desert. Walk through the old hotel where many travelers stayed when they were passing through this rugged town. Just about around every corner, there is something very interesting to see. If you are in this area, I highly recommend a visit here and let your imagination be kindled by the stories of perseverance and the relentless pursuit of the American dream in the Wild West. The Castle Dome Mine Museum is not just a collection of relics, it's a tribute to the human spirit and the relentless pursuit of prosperity and innovation. I absolutely enjoyed my visit here and I stayed way too long. This place is awesome. Uh, I have spent way more time here than I expected and I could spend a little bit more time here. They had done a great job with preserving this old ghost town. This is a cool spot. If you are out here in Southwest Arizona, this is definitely worth coming out and checking out, especially if you're gonna go explore these beautiful mountains. Now, speaking of exploring, because I spent way too much time here, I've got a decision I have to make. All right, guys, I was getting ready to leave and I'm trying to figure out where to go next. And uh, Jericho, this nice gentleman came up and gave me some good ideas of places to go check out. But he's like, did you check out the military room while you're here? I was like, no. He's like, you gotta go see the military room. So I'm on a golf cart and we're going in the back way and he's gonna go show me the military room. There are so many buildings here. You really need a few hours just to see them all. And I must have walked past this one without glancing inside. I love that they have a building dedicated to the military veterans. And I was honored to place my name in the ledger. So guys, uh, you guys know I was a Navy corpsman for 26 years, but before I was a corpsman, I worked down in the boiler room, and this is the insignia from a boiler technician. Now this is called something that I'm not gonna see on camera because it's inappropriate, but that is a boiler tech insignia. That's pretty cool to see that.
I'm so glad I got invited to go back in there and check that out and uh, talking with him and hearing his story. Uh, yeah. I, I wish I could have filmed the entire thing. Uh, his story is actually a true miracle. Um, but you just have to come out here and, uh, and pay a visit to him to hear about that. Okay. <laughs> I've been here way too long, uh, much longer than anticipated. Not that I'm upset about it because it was absolutely worth it. Let's go down the trail for a bit um, and we'll talk about what the plan is. All right, I have driven about a half mile down away from the ghost town and I am on the trailhead for the Big Eye Mine Trail. This is a 15 mile one way up and back, so it's 30 miles round trip. My plan was to go visit the ghost town, then go do this trail and go check out the mine in the end and kind of wrap up there. However, time has gotten away from me, so I have a decision to make. I can either head home now, which is a pretty long drive, or I can head up this trail kind of briskly and not document it. And I think that's what I'm gonna do, guys. So I apologize, we're gonna go hit this trail, but I'm not going to show, maybe I'll turn the GoPro on once or twice on the way, but I'm really gonna be looking for bighorn sheep. And the gentleman that just showed me that military room said he's only seen one out here in three years. So it kind of deflated me a little bit. Now I'm not very optimistic, but I wanna go see this mine. I wanna see the cabin at the end of this trail. And so that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be for a long day, but I'm gonna make this work. Well, this is a beautiful trail, but it is probably the most rugged trail we've been on in the last two days. Uh, it's a little slow going, which worries me a little bit because it's already early afternoon, it's winter time, sun goes down early, which means if I'm not careful, we could end up being on the trail in the dark, which I really don't want to do. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to continue on. I just passed two guys on the trail coming in the other direction and they said it's a good 45 minutes to an hour still to get to the end of the trail. That means I'm gonna be coming off trail depending on how much time I spend at the mine, probably right about dusk. I'm in, I, we're gonna do this guys, we're gonna do it. We may not see any big orange sheep because we're gonna have to uh, pick up the pace, but uh, I wanna complete this trail. I wanna see the mine at the end. This is what I came here to do. I apologize, we're not doing some cool filming along the way, but uh, right now I'm just on a personal adventure mission to get this done. Definitely a few technical sections on this trail that are Holding me down. Um, yeah. Nothing crazy, just a little flexy. This definitely rates this trail as moderate, not easy. How's it going, guys? Good. How y'all doing? How, uh, how long of a drive to get to the end? Um, not far. Not far? Less than 30 minutes? I made it. There's still daylight and we got enough time to get up here, go do this short hike up this mountain and uh, check out this cabin and see if we can see the mine. This is what I was hoping to do today and I'm glad. I'm glad that I committed and came on down here. But uh, let's go see what we find. And still, still no big horn shit. It's a pretty steep half mile hike all the way up to the cabin, which is still very well preserved. This was home to the hardy men who worked this mine taking the gold from the earth. 
I can only imagine what a hard life it must have been. But I'll bet the reward of extracting the precious gold from the mine, which is just up a ways, which you'll see here in a second, made living in this cabin all worth it. Now I'm going to make my way up to the mine, and it's generally best practice to not explore abandoned mines as they are not maintained and no longer safe. But this is the first time I've seen a sign saying not to enter because making noise will kill bats. That's pretty interesting. The entrance to the mine is just a short hike up the mountain, and then there is a large structure that I believe is a stamp mill that was used to break down the ore before it was transported to the smelter, which is all the way in El Paso, Texas. The entrance to the mine was on top of this structure, and there was lots of evidence lying around of the hard work that was once done here. So I've been exploring this site here for the last half hour. So that is the mine over there. And then there are still some railroad ties that lead all the way up to what I'm imagining is some kind of stamp mill or processing plant for all the ore they were extracting out of here. Fascinating seeing all this stuff. What a, what a rugged place to work. I mean, it must have been hard to get all this equipment, supplies out here. And then, I mean, we're in Arizona, so summertime, whew, that would have been that would have been rough digging in the mines and processing ore and working out here. I gotta say, uh, I'm glad I came. This was totally worth it. Well, I hope you guys can forgive me for not filming the trail on the way up here, but I will say that it's a fun, rugged trail, beautiful scenery, and the cabin at the mine at the end or make it absolutely worth it. You definitely should come out here and uh, explore this whole area. I would have really regretted not coming here today on the drive home. And speaking of which, I have an hour and a half to get off the trail. I should be okay with sunlight and I still have a four hour drive home. So it's gonna be a long drive. This has been an awesome adventure, minus not seeing what I'm gonna consider a mythological creature. The bighorn sheep. I don't think they exist for as many years as I've come out to the desert. I have never seen one. Maybe one of these days, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this adventure. Please check us out over at trailrecon.com. We got all kinds of gear over there to outfit your next adventure. Until next time, safe travels.